I'm asked quite a lot, why can't I expand the storage on my Fire Stick or Cube? Well, this video is going to find out why and go through some troubleshooting steps. If you're watching this as a short, then tap the thumbnail in the bottom right hand corner to see the full video. If you're already watching the full video, hang tight, more details coming up shortly. Don't forget to like this video, share it and subscribe to my channel. Doing these three things help us make more great videos for you. So first of all, we need to make sure that we've got an OTG cable and that we've got a USB stick or a hard drive that's formatted to FAT32 and is less than two terabytes in size. So first things first, let's just make sure that you've got it plugged in correctly. So what you need to do is you need to ensure that you've unplugged the power cable from your Fire Stick or Cube plugged the OTG cable in, the male end of the OTG cable in to your Fire Stick or Cube where you've just removed the power supply and then plug the power supply or the power cable into the female end of the OTG cable and make sure that your USB stick or external hard drive is plugged in to the USB A socket on the OTG cable. So if after checking all the connections it's still not working, then what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to partition and format the USB stick or the hard drive so that it's compatible with the Fire Stick or Cube. Plug the uh, USB stick or the drive into our PC and we're just going to download a bit of software just to check that it's in the right format. Open up your browser. And then once your browser's open, go to the address bar at the top of the screen, OK? Delete anything that's in there and then type in there partitionwizard.com. Just as it's shown on the screen, partitionwizard.com, all in lowercase, no spaces. Then once you've typed that in, press enter or return on your keyboard. If you need to, pause this video and make a note of that address. So I've pressed the enter or return key on my keyboard and just go to for home there. And once you move your mouse over it, you should see partition wizard free. Move your mouse over that, left click once, then scroll down to download now, left click once, and it should start downloading. It should only take a few seconds. Once you see PW and some numbers hyphen free hyphen online, then click on it. If you don't see it, then close down your browser, go to any yellow folder and then find your downloads folder. That's usually on the left there, left click once and you're looking for PW, a load of numbers, hyphen free online, double left click that. The screen may darken and say, do you want to allow this app ch to make changes to your device? We'll make sure that it says mini partition wizard and the number uh, number at the moment is 12 and the verified publisher is mini tool software limited and the file origin is hard drive on this computer move your mouse over yes if that's all correct and present and left click once then select your language just there mine's english click on ok and then click on continue installing free edition and that should put a dot in the little blue circle beside it, click next. And what you want to do now is you just want to take the tick out of mini tool shadow maker free because we only need mini tool partition wizard to be installed. And it's optional here. If you don't want to participate in the customer experience improvement program, take the tick out of that too. Then click next, click next again. If you get this message, then you've installed it before. Click on yes. Don't worry if you haven't installed it before, you won't get that message. Now it's going to download. This bit might take a bit of time, really depends on the speed of your internet connection. Just be patient with it. Once it's downloaded, it will then start to install. Again, this might take a bit of time, really depends on the speed of your computer. Once it's installed, then just click finish, left click once. And then if you see this box come up on the right here, a message and advert, then you can just put a tick in do not show this message again and then click on the cross just there to get rid of that. Now, what we're looking for here is our external drive. So hopefully it should identify itself as removable. I can take no responsibility for what happens here. You need to ensure that you select the right disk. So please make sure you know which disk is the correct disk, which disk is your external device. If you're not sure, then the best thing to do 
is close down this program. So quit it, click on the cross in the top right hand corner, then click on yes. Close down any other windows that might be open in the background. Unplug the USB disk or drive and then just open the program up. There you go, it's put a shortcut just on your desktop, mini tool partition wizard. If you see this, click yes and then just check. Okay, so at the moment I've just got disk one present there. So I'm going to close this down again, click on yes to quit. I'm going to plug my external USB drive in. I'm going to give it a couple of seconds. Like mine, it's come up at the bottom USB drive F. Okay, so just make a note of that. Click on mini partition wizard tool again, click on yes. And now there we go. Disk two has appeared. So we're actually looking and working on disk two. So make sure you do not touch the disk that was there already. Okay, in my case, that was disk one. So what we're looking for here is we just want to see whether this disk is FAT32. So as you can see here, mine's got F. NTFS. This means this is not FAT32. It is an NTFS format and therefore will not be recognized by a fire stick or up to a second generation cube. Now, if you've got a third generation cube, I believe it will recognize the NTFS format. Now, I should say at this point, you've got to make sure that there's nothing on this drive you need to keep because it will wipe the drive. It will erase the contents on it and they won't be retrievable. So please make sure that there's nothing important on this drive. As you can see, mine has got an NTFS partition. It's also got an EXT4 partition on it. And having other partitions again could confuse the Fire Stick or the Cube. So what we want to do is we want to wipe all partitions, okay, and reset it up as FAT32 so that it can be recognized by the Cube or the Stick. So to do this, we need to carefully move our mouse over the drive that we're working with. Now make sure, make doubly sure this is the correct drive and you can do that as well just by checking the size there. Now this is a 4 GB USB stick I'm using. It's showing there as 3.73 GB so it'll always be slightly less than the, the full format because the system format does take some of the hard drive space away from it. So it's going to be slightly less than what it says actually on the stick itself. So mine says four gigabytes on the stick. This is a 3.73 gigabyte stick, disk two. And if I look up there next to disk two, there you go. It says general USB flash disk, USB, and it says that it's removable. So that doubly sort of makes sure that it is the right disk. Now, if you're, if you're still not sure, then all you got to do is click on the cross in the top right hand corner, quit the program, so click yes, unplug the USB drive or flash drive, go back into it, click yes, and disk two's disappeared. So it's definitely disk two is the drive that I'm working with and the drive that I wanna wipe. Let's just plug it back in, disk two, has appeared. Where it's got the disk number, yours might be different. Move your mouse over that, then right click, and then what you wanna do is you wanna left click, delete all partitions. Okay, so it says, are you sure you want to delete all partitions on disk two? Yes. Next thing we wanna do, move our mouse over the area that says unallocated there, click on the right mouse button, and then click create, that's a left click. And here, we want to make sure that the file system says FAT32. At the moment, it's saying NTFS. So click on the little drop down, select FAT32, and then click on OK. And then what we want to do is just want to double check. So we just, it says FAT32 there. Click on Apply. Click on Yes if you agree that you're okay to continue and you're gonna wipe everything off of the, the, uh, the USB drive or disk. So click yes if you're happy with that, click no if you're not. So I'll click yes, it's now actually creating the partition. Now this bit might take a bit of time, it really depends on the size of your disk and the speed of your computer and the disk. Once it's finished, you'll see applied all the pending changes successfully. So click on the okay button, Click on the cross up there, click on yes just there and plug the USB stick back into your OTG cable on the Fire Stick or Cube. We need to check to find out what version of the Fire OS we're running because depending on what version we're running depends on what we need to do to get 
the USB stick to be recognized or the or the hard drive to be recognized. So go across to the settings cog just over there on the right. Go down to My Fire TV, middle button, and then make sure that about is highlighted middle button and just have a look over on the right it says software version now if your software version is fire os 7 or above then we should just be able to plug the fat 32 stick straight off hard drive straight into the otg cable and it will be recognized if it's fire os 6 or below then we need to type in a few commands to get it set up and recognized so mine's showing fire os os 7 so i've got my stick it's formatted to fat 32 so i'm just going to plug it in plugged it in leave it a few seconds and let's just go down to storage and there you go i can see that i've got external space of four gigabytes fire os 6 or below users hang tight i'm going to show you what to do in a moment but first of all for fire os, OS 7 or above users how do you determine whether the external space is going to be used for apps or whether it's going to be used for storing files? Well, at the moment, because it's formatted to FAT32, it can store files. So it can store music files, it can store video files, it can store pictures, etc. But if you wanted to store uh, if you wanted it to store apps, you want to transfer your apps across to it, then just go up, then just press the back button once on the remote control, go down to USB drive, middle button, and there we go. We've got an option there to format to internal storage. So it says select this option if you intend Fire TV to use apps stored on this USB drive. Once formatted, this USB drive can only be used by this Fire TV. All content on this USB drive will be erased during formatting. So if you try copying apps to this drive, and then try plugging it into a PC or a Mac or another device, it will not be readable. It's only readable on this device. Okay, so I want to format it for internal storage so I can move apps to the, uh, the, uh, the USB drive. Make sure that format to internal storage is highlighted, middle button, and there you go. It says it's formatting it. Now, now this bit might take a bit of time. It really does depend on the size of your drive and the speed of your drive too. So it could take some time. Don't try and unplug it or switch the fire stick off. It might look as though it's hung. Please just be patient with it at this point. Now, please note that also when you transfer in apps to the USB device, you might find that some apps just simply won't move. Now, unfortunately, if they won't move, then this means that the programmer who made the app originally has stipulated that the app can only be used on the internal storage. So unfortunately, there's not a lot you can do about that, I'm afraid. You might also find sometimes when apps are updated, they get reinstalled back to internal memory this is quite normal you just have to go back in again and move it again after it's been updated so it's a good idea just to go through your apps occasionally and just check to see whether or not they've moved on to the internal storage okay so once the formatting is complete you'll get this message your usb drive has been formatted you can now use this usb drive to transfer data to amazon fire tv stick 4k max so press the ok button so how do you move the apps to usb storage so make sure that you're at the home screen press the picture of the house on the remote go across to the settings cog just over there on the right go down and across to applications middle button then go down to manage installed applications middle button find the app that you want to move to usb storage highlight it middle button and then go to move to usb storage middle button and it says please wait moving time will depend on the app size and the speed of your usb drive some apps will continue to store data on the internal storage even when moved to usb please do not unplug the usb drive during the move so as it says there it might take a little while for it to move and there we go it's now moved it's gone back to this menu here and move to usb storage has actually changed to move to internal storage now as i said to you earlier some apps can't be moved now another another 
sort of highlight is that this has been moved on to the USB storage is you've got that little icon, the little USB gray icon just to the right of the app name, which shows you it's been moved over there. Now, if I go down to this app here, say YouTube, go into it, as you'll notice, there is no option for move to USB storage. This means that the app has been programmed not to run off of external storage. It's programmed only to run on internal storage. Unfortunately, I'm afraid there's nothing you can do about that. So you've just got to leave it on the internal storage. My advice would be move all of the apps that you can onto external storage and leave the ones that want to remain on the internal storage, leave them on there. Now, what if you find an app's running slow and you want to move it back? Then all you do is just highlight the app that you want to move back to the internal storage, middle button, and then just go down to move to internal storage, middle button. And there you go. So it says move in this app to internal disk. Please wait. Moving time will depend on the app size and the speed of your USB drive. And again, please do not unplug the USB drive during the move. So there you go. That's now moved. And you can see if I go back a step, the little icon of the USB drive next to explore has disappeared. If you're running a version of Fire OS but that's below seven. So in my case, I'm running 6.2.9.4. Then there's going to be a little bit of extra work to do to get it to recognize your external storage. So first of all, what we need to do is press the home button on the remote control to go back to the main screen and then go across all the way to the right to the settings cog. Once that's highlighted, then go down to My Fire TV, then press the middle button on the remote, and then you're looking for developer options. Now, if like mine, you don't see it, then all you need to do is go into about and then find the name of your device and highlight it. Like mine, mine says Fire TV Stick 4K. Yours may say something different. Just press the middle button on the remote control until you see no need, you're already a developer come up at the bottom of the screen, then stop pushing the middle button, then press the back button on the remote. And there you should see developer options just below about go down to developer options, middle button, and then go down to apps from unknown sources. If it's set to off, like mine is middle button on the remote control, middle button again, and then it goes to on and make sure that ADB debugging is switched on. If it's switched off like mine, highlight it, middle button, and that'll go to on. Then we need to make sure that we've got downloader installed. So go across to the magnifying glass, go down, middle button, and then just start to type downloader. And as you're typing it, downloader should appear in the suggestions below. Once you see it, highlight downloader, middle button on the remote control. Make sure the orange downloader with the arrow pointing down towards the, uh, the line is highlighted, middle button, and then middle button again to start installing. Now this bit might take a bit of time. It really depends on the speed of your internet connection and the speed of your stick. Once you see open appear, middle button, and then make sure that allow is highlighted here. If deny is highlighted, then this simply isn't gonna work. So make sure allow is highlighted, middle button on the remote control, middle button again to get rid of the quick start guide, then press the up button once on the remote to get the cursor flashing in the box under enter a URL or search term, middle button to get the keyboard up and just type in there 21203. That's 21203. Press the play pause button and then hopefully in a few seconds, it should direct you to my website where we need to download something called ADB Shell. So once you see my website, keep going down. And what we're looking for is we are looking for ADB Shell. So keep going down. And there it is under utilities, remote ADB Shell. So get your red circle somewhere over the icon middle button on the remote, and then hopefully it should start to download. Now, once it's uh, downloaded, keep pressing the down button until cancel is highlighted. Press the right button once so that install is highlighted, middle button, and then let it install. Once it's installed, make sure done's highlighted, middle button. Then we don't need to keep this file, so press the right-hand side on the circle on the remote to highlight delete, middle button. Press the left-hand side of the circle on the remote to highlight the second delete, middle button, and then just keep tapping the left-hand side of the remote until home is highlighted, middle button, and then back button twice. 
then press the home button on the remote to go back to the main menu. Press and hold the home button on the remote until this appears, then let go, go across to apps, middle button, and then go down and across to this icon just here. Once it's highlighted, middle button. Now it says generating RSA key pair. There we go. Once it's done that, middle button, middle button again to bring the keyboard up. Then we need to type local host. So that's local H O S T, all one word, no spaces. And then once you've typed in local host, press the play pause button on the remote control. Make sure that it's got 5555 at the top of the screen there. Press the play pause button and then go down and make sure connect is highlighted. It's a little bit difficult to see, but it's a slightly lighter gray when it's selected. Middle button on the remote. And then if you see this allow USB debugging, then make sure there's a tick in the box just to the left of always allow from this computer. So press the middle button on the remote to put a tick in there, then go down to OK, middle button. We should now have a, uh, a prompt. Now mine says Mantis, yours may say something different. You've got your cursor flashing at the bottom of the screen, middle button on the remote, and then in there you want to type and you need to be very, very careful with typing this and you've got to make sure, I should have said before, that the USB drive or stick is plugged in. So you want to type in there SM space list and then you want to look for the hyphen, which is if you go down to, sorry, I'm jumping ahead of myself, the little symbols there, it's just there. So it's the hyphen that goes in the middle, not the one that goes at the bottom and then go back to ABC and type in there discs. So that's SM space list hyphen discs. If you need to jot this down, pause the video and then unpause it when you're ready. So once you've done that, press the play pause button on the remote and then you should see faded in the background something that says disc and then it should say a couple of uh, numbers. So mine says eight comma zero. Yours may say something different. Please make a note of this. If you can't see it that well, then press the back button on the remote and there you go. That makes it a bit easier to see. So mine says disc comma, it's disc eight comma zero. So if you've come into this screen, press the down button on the remote control once to get the cursor flashing on the line at the bottom of the screen. Press the middle button to get the keyboard back up. Next thing we want to do is we want to type S M space partition space disk and then whatever it had in brackets. So mine said disk colon eight comma zero. If yours said anything different, then type in what you've got on your screen faded in the background there. So as you can see there, mine has got disk colon eight comma zero space private. So this will mean that all of the disk will be used for app storage. If you want half of the disk to be used as app storage and the other half to be used as say for instance storage for video files or pictures or music or something like that, then instead of putting private, you would put in there mixed 50. And that will mean that like I say, 50% of the disc will be used for app storage and 50% of the disc will be used for video, music or picture storage. But there we go. In this example, it's going to be used just purely for app storage. So as you can see there, I've put in there SM space partition space, and then what I had come up on the second line, so mine said disk colon eight comma zero space private. Like I say, if you wanted to use it for both app storage and video storage, then you could put in there mixed space 50 instead of private. So once you've double checked it, once you've triple checked it, 
once you've quadruple checked it and you're 110% sure that everything's right that you've typed in, then press the play pause button on the remote. And like mine, I've got unexpected removal and then the little USB symbol comes back up. Now you may or may not get that on yours, but just leave it until you get that little mantis prompt to come up with nothing beside it just so that you know that everything's been completed and I'm just going to press the back button on the remote come out of this press the home button to go back to home and then let's just go across here to the cog and then down to my fire tv go into about and then go down to storage and as you'll see it doesn't actually show external storage like Fire OS 7 does. Don't worry, that's perfectly okay. Press the home button on the remote control to go back to the main menu. And now what you'll notice is, is if we install a new app, if it's compatible with external storage, then it will in, install automatically on the external storage so I'm just going to install explore file manager as I normally would let it install from the app store so nothing different here that I'm doing to what I normally would so let's just let it download and install and once it's installed then I'm just going to go back to the main menu there we go so I'm just going to press the home button on the remote control I'm going to go across to the settings cog go down and across to applications middle button go down to manage installed applications middle button and let's just find explore so I'm going to keep going down and there you go as you can see explore has been installed on the external storage now how do I know that because you've got a little gray USB icon beside it now what if you've already got an app installed on fire os 6 or above and you want to move it to external storage well unfortunately it doesn't have the option to move to uh, external storage so what you've got to do is you've got to go into this manage installed apps find the app that you want to move across to the usb storage uninstall it so let's uninstall vlc for instance okay let that uninstall and then press the home button on the remote to go back to the main menu, go across to the magnifying glass down middle button and search for it again in the app store. So I'm searching for it now. And then once you see it in the suggestions below, go down to VLC media player, highlight it middle button on the remote, highlight the traffic cone middle button and middle button again and that will reinstall the app hopefully it shouldn't take too long it really just depends on the speed of your internet connection something you might notice is it might take a little bit longer to install because it's installing on a external device rather than the internal device the external storage is a lot slower than the internal storage that's why some developers don't like or insist on apps being installed on the internal storage rather than external storage so let's just leave that to install and there we are once it's installed you'll see open appear so let's just press the home button on the remote control go across to the settings cog go down and across to applications and middle button and then go down to manage installed applications middle button and go down find vlc and hopefully now yep there you go vlc has got a little usb icon beside it signifying that it's actually installed on the external storage rather than the internal storage so there you go that was a bit of a troubleshooting guide for you for increasing adding external storage to your fire stick or cube so as i say check the connections make sure that the usb cable or the otg cable is plugged into the fire tv stick and the other end is plugged into the power cable make sure that you are using the original Amazon power cable because third party power or power cables and power plugs may not be able to deliver enough voltage or ampage to power the OTG cable. So make sure that you're using a plug that's one amp or more and five volts. Also make sure that your external device that you're plugging in is formatted to FAT32. If you're using any Fire Stick or 
a Fire TV Cube 1 or 2. It can be formatted to NTFS if you're using the third generation Fire TV Cube, but anything less than the third generation Fire TV Cube, it must be FAT32 and the storage must be no larger than two terabytes. If that still doesn't work, then perhaps try using a different drive or USB stick. And if you can, if you're using an external hard drive, these do take a lot more power than USB sticks. So it may well be that simply the power adapter can't supply enough power to power the external hard drive and the Fire TV stick or cube. So therefore, perhaps try using a different drive or a USB stick to rule that out. If you are using a hard drive, I would recommend using a power plug of two amps or more. So something like a big bulky iPad power supply should do the trick. And if you've found you've had problems yourself and managed to overcome them and you've overcome them in a different way or the same way, post down below. Let us know what worked for you. And if it still doesn't work, then equally post in the comments down below and either myself or hopefully somebody may be able to give you some further help. I hope you liked this video and if you did, why not stick around? I've got thousands of other videos on my YouTube channel covering all sorts of subjects. Hopefully whilst you're here, you're going to find something to educate you, entertain you, amuse you and maybe even save you some time and money.